All right, welcome. In this video, I want to introduce another uh, model of computation called the pushdown automaton. So a push down, push down automaton uh, is a, another type of finite automata state machine like we've been working with already. So specifically, we consider it to be a non-deterministic finite automata, but it's been augmented with memory. So our in our normal DFAs and NFAs, in the finite automatons we've looked at so far, the only memory we have in the model is the state. So whatever state we are in is remembering everything that we have. In the pushdown automata, we also have this extra memory, which is a stack. So we think of a data structure as being uh, augmenting the machine. And the machine can always access the stack as it's operating and performing its operations. And so the way this happens, so in a normal non-deterministic finite automata, when we would label a transition, we would usually just label it with a sig sigma, some symbol from the alphabet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to label it with a uh, symbol and a, a rule about what we're doing to the stack. What do we do to the stack when we process that symbol? And it's possible that we could do two things. We can push or we can pop. And the way these seem like they might be a little bit out of order, but we, it's because we're treating this as a mathematical function. It's saying if you are reading this symbol and you can pop this off of the top of the stack at this moment, then you could also push it. And this is usually labeling a transition, a state transition that moves you from one state to another. So let's take a look at a quick example of what that might look like here. This is a push down automata for the language, uh, the simple language we've been looking at in, with our Chomsky, sorry, with our context-free grammars, which is zero to the n, one to the n. And we can see that we've got these more elaborate labels of our transitions on this machine down here. It kind of looks like a non-deterministic finite automata, but it has these more elaborate labels. And so again, the first symbol here is just the normal, the symbol that we're reading. But then we also have these extra symbols here um, that are for the, the pop and the push that we're doing to the stack. So um, let me explain this particular uh, PDA push down automata because it is um, it's using some models that are uh, you know some, some design patterns that are specific to this type of model of computation in particular at the beginning here you'll notice that what this is saying is saying push a dollar sign onto the stack and then at the end before we enter our accept state we have to pop the dollar sign off the stack what's going on here well um, this is a, a way for us to put something on the bottom of the stack to let us know we're at the bottom. So this is saying, okay, mark the bottom of the stack. This is saying, make sure you've read that you're at the bottom of the stack when you get here. Okay, now why is that? Well, how else are we gonna use the stack? Well, let's look here. In this particular state, we're gonna read in the zeros. And every time we read in one of the zeros, we're gonna put another zero on the stack. That's how we're gonna remember the n, the number n. We can't remember it in the state, we're gonna remember it in the stack instead. So at the end of processing all of our zeros here, we should have n zeros on the stack. Now we can follow this epsilon transition. It says do nothing to the stack. That's what epsilon to epsilon means. Pop nothing off and push nothing on read no symbols so just this is a pure epsilon transition and then we get to this state which reads in ones while we pop the zeros off so every time we read in a one we pop the zero off now after we're done reading in all the ones there's either two possibilities if we're done reading all the ones there might still be zeros on our stack if there are we can't follow this transition to the accept state, meaning we haven't read enough ones in, so we're not in an equal bit. But if there's exactly the right a number of ones, then after we read in all the zeros, we can pop this off and we can enter into this accept state. The last thing we might ask ourselves is what happens if there are still ones to be processed? You'll notice there are no ones leaving this state here. That means, just like in a normal non-deterministic finite automata, that means we go to a reject state instead. So if there were more ones than we needed, we, we, could, we can't follow this one because there's no more zeros, and we can't 
we can follow this, but as we start reading in the ones, we terminate. So really, if there's too many ones, there's no path leading to the accept state. So we know that we reject in that case as well. So this particular example shows how we used the stack. In this case, we're using it to count the number of zeros by remembering how many zeros we've seen by putting one on the stack for every zero we see, pulling them off the stack for every one we see. If there was exactly the right equal number, then we should be able to uncover that dollar sign that we put on the bottom of the stack and get us out to that accept state. The only other thing I maybe I'll mention is remember epsilon is in this language so I have put this up here although technically we can put the dollar sign on transition epsilon and take it off again to get down here. That's the only other reason why I've had that as an accept state up there as well. Okay so this is our first example of a push down automata and as we've seen in some of our other models we also want to have a formal definition of what that is. So here we have our push down automata formal definition and maybe as becoming a little bit more familiar um, we're expecting to see it defined as sort of a tuple of some kind some just sort of collection or sequence of more other formal uh, things, other formal mathematical de de definitions. So in this case, it's a six tuple. We've seen five tuples and four tuples before. Why is it a six tuple? Okay, well, let's see. We've got uh, Q. That's our set of states. That's similar to what we've seen before in an automata. Sigma. That's our input, al input alphabet. That's the same thing that we've been um, using it for before. Okay, we've got something new now is gamma. Okay, gamma here is the stack alphabet and the stack alphabet might be different and usually is from the input alphabet. The stack alphabet of our last machine was dollar sign and zero, that's it, dollar sign and zero. We didn't use the ones on our stack, but our input alphabet was zero and one. Okay, now our transition function is definitely going to be a little bit stranger. Okay, let's see what it is. Okay, delta, the transition function, takes a state and a symbol, possibly epsilon, and another symbol from the stack alphabet. Remember, this is what we might be popping off the stack. So it's saying if we're in this state and we're scanning this symbol and we can pop this symbol off of the top of the stack, then we should go to the power set or non-deterministic. So there might be zero um, transitions here. There might be one transition here. There might be more than one transition here labeled with this particular uh, state symbol symbol combination. And what does it end up telling us where we go? It says you go to a new state, but you also might push something on to the stack. Okay, and I just want to highlight all of these sigmas and gammas here have the subscript epsilon on them. And I just want to remind us down below what that means. That says, hey, that's all of our input alphabet plus possibly epsilon's the empty string. And same thing with our stack alphabet. So these transitions, these could always be epsilon's in the place of any symbol. Okay, we saw that. Again, this is just a formalization of those uh, transitions that we, we saw in our example. And then what else do we need? It looks like the rest here, we have a Q0. That's just our start state. That's nothing new. Okay, F, a set of accepting states, also not new. Okay, so what are the main new things here that we've added? This is basically the definition of a non-deterministic finite automata with two extra bits. We've added in the stack alphabet and we've added in room for processing that the stack okay so a formal definition and now allowing us to maybe use this in a proof or maybe uh, compute with it okay so i've already kind of mentioned this implicitly that a push down automata uh, at least the variant that we've just introduced does not have a way to detect an empty stack so what that means is um, when it gets down to the bottom of the stack, there's no signal that the stack gives to the automaton that says, yes, you're at the bottom. That's why it's a design pattern, usually, to use a special symbol, just dollar sign. I use dollar sign because that's what I was taught to use, you know, 25 years ago by my professor uh, because I was using the same textbook and that's probably what's used in the textbook. Okay, now there's nothing special about the dollar sign other than we picked it out. The reason why do we pick the dollar sign? We assume it's not in your alphabet already. 
It's a weird symbol. If it is already in your alphabet because you're doing something with dollar signs, pick something else. That's all that matters, okay? So that's why here we're calling it a special symbol. Specifically, we mean a symbol that's not already in your alphabet somewhere, okay? And we use that to mark the bottom of the stack and therefore we kind of get this design pattern where we're placing it on the bottom at the beginning and then we're trying to pop it off at the end, okay? Now I'll mention there are and there is another variation of the push down automaton which is popular um, that does have a means of de uh, detecting the empty stack or more importantly the, it, we add a rule to it that says uh, a machine only accepts if the stack is empty. It will never accept if there is anything on the stack. That's a variant of the push down automata that is equivalent. We could prove that they are the same power. Um, and so if you happen to be reading um, some work online where they say, oh, and it doesn't accept because there's still symbols on the stack or something to that effect, you'll know that you're just working in that slightly different variant. And that's just because maybe the people that work with that variant don't like this design pattern of using a dollar sign, and that's perfectly acceptable. Okay. All right. So this has just been a very quick introduction to a push down automatas. Um, thanks a lot for watching.